Written communication, it is for the record. Employers often list written communication as the number one skill they want in employees, and that's because every job has some important writing tasks associated with it. And there's a growing sense that people just aren't learning how to write effectively in school these days. And so while you're working on your GED and while you're trying to prepare yourself for the workplace, focus on your writing skills, not just to pass the test, but because this is an important skill to have the rest of your life. You can see the beginning of this article that was uh, published by CBS News a, a couple of years back that said that many employers complain they can't find qualified candidates. And in survey after survey, employers are complaining about job candidates' inability to speak and to write clearly. Most new technology is text-based, said William Ellett, a Harvard professor, adding that a majority of students work, uh, uh, report working with people they have never met and communicating with them through email. And 30 or 40 years ago, using writing for that wouldn't have been possible, he said, but that makes writing all the more important. So you may just assume that um, writing is not as important as it used to be. People text, people make phone calls, people do communicate in a lot of different ways, but writing has actually never been more important than it is now in the workplace. As a worker, even if you're not composing a lot of emails or doing a lot of writing because you don't have a desk type job, you still have to be able to, to accurately fill out forms, uh, compose emails when you need to, even if it's just to communicate with your uh, supervisor about an issue you're having, be able to complete reports, write memos. I remember wa working with a student several years ago who was a police officer, and you would think of that as being a writing heavy occupation. Uh, but he explained to me how important writing everything down was because when he wrote his police reports, that was going to be the basis of testimony and evidence that was produced in court. And it was a super important document to get the report right. Uh, if he couldn't express himself clearly, somebody might or might not go to jail. And so it really was a critical skill for his job. Written communication leaves what we call a paper trail, an official record of an event, a transaction, a conversation, or a claim. And so anything that's written down, especially in these days when things are being transmitted electronically, uh, of, there's a record of that communication somewhere out there on the internet or on the web or on your company's job site um, computer. Uh, so you've got to be very, very careful with any kind of written communication. It tells exactly what transpired in that uh, written uh, conversation. And so you can't say that wasn't what you meant. Um, and so it, it really can be very, very critical. It can be used as evidence in a legal proceeding, uh, or it may be consulted for an audit. or And so any kind of recorded information that you have to do in the work place has to be incredibly accurate. A misplaced decimal point can cost your company money. So written communication has to work harder than verbal communication because it doesn't have that sort of tone of voice that communicates whether we're angry or upset or confused. All of those things have to be communicated with words that we choose. Uh, it doesn't have those visual clues uh, that tell us whether or not someone is smiling or frowning or uh, laughing. And all of those things that we can see in someone's face are not able to be communicated in a piece of paper. And you may be tempted to add emojis uh, to make up for that fact, but trust me, emojis are not considered professional. Don't use them in the workplace. You don't get gestures, you know, those sort of those things we do with our hands. If you're like me, you probably like to talk with your hands. And so you don't get that in written communication. And a lot of times you don't get context, meaning you don't get the surroundings, the situation. Uh, it's just a uh, black letters on a white page, and sometimes it can be very, very stark. So you have to give it a lot more thought, give it a lot more consideration, be precise and very thoughtful about what you're writing. Don't just dash things off haphazardly in a way that may come back to haunt you later. Um, think about how the person who's receiving your communication will hear 
that communication? Are you communicating a very harsh tone uh, by typing something in all caps? Or uh, are you a little too free with the exclamation points like I am uh, that can make it sound like you're kind of yelling at someone uh, on a piece of paper if you put too many exclamation points in there? So be very, very mindful and careful about what you put on that piece of paper or on that computer screen. In a work setting, you should always assume that you should write correctly. And that means spelling, that means punctuation, that means capitalization, um, all of those things that are part of what we call standard English uh, writing. And so that's what you want to learn how to do. Uh, no emojis, as I mentioned, no text abbreviations, no little smiley faces with dotted eyes. I used to teach a composition course in college and I had a student who would handwrite some things and she would dot every single one of her eyes with a little smiley face. And honestly, people, I just could not take her very seriously. Don't be that person. So here's an example of what not to do. Look at this uh, text, this uh, email for a, a minute. What is Prince communicating about himself by the way he is writing this email? It's oh, informal to say the least. Um, it's very unprofessional and it communicates a really confusing tone. Um, and it also is very dismissive. He says in advance, take making assumptions. Thanks for finishing up the deadline while I'm gone. <laughs> you know, uh, instead of asking nicely for someone to help him with work, he's uh, just throwing things off on other people uh, and giving them responsibilities. Uh, and it looks like he wants to applaud them for that at the end, but we've got a little smiling poop there too. It's just, it's there's so much wrong with this. Um, I believe you should be able to follow the link at the bottom of this slide. And if you can do that, uh, you will see a, a way of revising this note in a more professional way. Writing in a business setting is less about expressing your personality and more about showing professionalism. You're getting that this is a theme, right? Professionalism, because you're not just representing yourself, you're representing the company. And especially when you're, if you are in a position where you're dealing with customers or people outside your business, how you represent your company is very, very important to your employer. And because it's so easy to mistype on a cell phone uh, keyboard, find a computer if you need to compose an email for work uh, or anything that's a little bit more formal. It's so, so easy to uh, let the little spell checker mischeck something on your screen that you happen to miss. Always, always, always go back and read something before you hit send. And if you like, I encourage you to pause for a moment and read some of these, oh, gruesome uh, mistypings. So even though you are representing your company, the written communication is a reflection on you. People tend to make judgments about you uh, and your competence based on your ability to write clearly and correctly. And this starts right at the beginning with your job application, with your letter of introduction of yourself, with your resume, all of those documents that you produce when you are trying to get a job in the first place, people are gonna make judgments about you based on how well you do those simple tasks. So there's no place like a resume and a job application to make a good first impression. Make sure that you take the time to type it or write it correctly. Um, if you look over this uh, example uh, of an application, you can see that there's all kinds of things that should have been done differently. Starting with the address, we have all lowercase E's and P's and R's and road is misspelled. Take a minute to kind of glance over this yourself to see what you think. 
This was a uh, example that we worked up in class one day. And you can see that someone just got in the habit of writing very informally in a text situation and didn't know how to sort of shift gears into writing a little bit more formally with the right capital letters and making sure they are spelling correctly uh, when they got ready to do something uh, more important. Notice too that in the email address section, what the email address is listed there. If your email address is 2sexy43 at gmail.com, you want to consider changing that. It's fine to have a fun, colorful email address for personal reasons, but once you get out there in the real world and are trying to apply for jobs, you need to set up an account with Gmail or whoever, it's always free to set up a new account with Gmail um, that is more professional and uh, more specifically relates to your name if, if possible. That will keep other people from being confused. So for instance, if your name is John Smith, you're not gonna be able to be John Smith at gmail.com. I'm sure that name is already taken, but add the numbers or add an initial or whatever it takes to make your email address look more professional. Proofread. This is an example of a resume uh, that is full of all kinds of laughable mistakes and silly things that should not be there. Do you want to include your uh, nickname like Bada Bing in the middle of your resume at the top? No, I don't think so. Um, and so be careful with how you put your pers uh, your resume together so that it is a reflection on you. Um, I'm not going to read through this whole thing. I'm going to let you uh, pause the video and take as long as you can, uh, can to uh, glance over this and see what not to do. Not a good idea here. Proofread. Because your resume might say that you're a professional booger when you meant to say blogger. So proofread, proofread.